our calling, your calling is to walk in righteousness. You're called to be righteous. You're called, the Bible says, Peter said, he's quoting the Old Testament. He says, be holy for God is holy. But we live in a world of a, 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 a time of grace, a, a dispensation. That's just a fancy word for saying it's a time. It's a period of time. How many know judgment is coming? Oh, didn't get a big amen on that one. How many know judgment is coming? <laughs> the Bible says that the judgment is coming on the sons of disobedience. The God saved you to deliver you. The Bible says in Romans that that God didn't save you that that you could continue in sin. God saved you to be free from sin. Is this making sense? All right, let me show it to you. First Peter chapter one. Guys, you got to move quickly with me in the back. First Peter chapter one. Starting with verse 15. But as he called, he called you. But as he who called you is holy. How many? God is holy. There's no sin in him. You also. Everybody say you also. I love the words of God because let me tell you about God. God is clear. You can leave this church today. You can think that it's okay for you to continue to walk in whatever your sin is. How many have a favorite sin? Y'all was looking for someone. Come on. You're like, you're like, I'm smarter than that, Pastor. You ain't going to get me on that one. Okay. Okay. Moving right along. But, but see, you also, I love the clarity of the word of God because it's so clear that our calling is to you also doesn't mean the person next to you. It means you. You also be holy in, again, notice the clarity your mama says, hey, stop cussing. And then you say, you say something, and then, you know what, she, you get in trouble for that. She's going to scold you, and you said, oh, I didn't think that was a cuss word. <laughs> what do you expect your mama to do? Go up to you and say, hey, don't say, and start listing all the cuss words? Yeah. How many know we just try to, we go find a, you know what, find a play, a, you know what, sometimes we just con ourselves. Man, we just like try to, oh no, I, you know what, I wasn't, I would, you know what, and there's, come on, and there's cookie crumbs on your mouth. <laughs> I love the word because it's such clarity. You also be holy in most of your conduct. Do you see the clarity? It's you do it and you do it in everything. How many know there's there's things that are easier for you to not to fall into? And there's other things that are that there are things that are easier and harder. There are sins that you just don't have any problem with. How many of those sins that you have a big problem with? So all means all. This is the calling. The problem is, the problem is, we got the guy on this side and he sees this and he makes a decision. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to, I ain't watching no pornography this week. Right? And he and he's going to watch pornography. 
How many ever gone on a diet? And that morning, you never even went by that donut shop. That day, you went by the donut shop, and you oh, you're just like, oh, man. Yeah, you know, the ladies are like, what do you want? Oh, I want one of those. I want one of those. You don't even like those, amen? And I'll give me three of those, amen? You haven't had a jelly donut in eight years, but you ordered a half a dozen jelly donuts that morning. <laughs> come on, come on, am I the only one? Paul said it like this. He said, the, Paul said it like this. The very thing that I want to do, I don't do. And the very thing that I don't want to do, that I do. Can anybody relate? Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. It doesn't change your calling. And the problem is we have put ourselves under teachers that won't hold us to any call of walking in holiness. Because the problem is there's a distortion, a perversion of grace that is being taught in the body of Christ. Hey, I don't know if you noticed. Here, did somebody notice? Come on, come on, you rocket smart scientist theologians. Did you notice this is in the New Testament? Come on, somebody. And we have listened to these people that are just going to tickle our ears and convince us that, you know what, God was mad in the Old Testament, had a bad attitude in the Old Testament, but all of a sudden, you know what, God is not so mad in the New Testament. And that's total garbage. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God has always been a God of grace. He will always be a God of grace, but that same God is a God of judgment. So what is our calling? Our calling is that we are saved. How many are saved? How many are born again? How many love Jesus? Okay. Then your calling is this calling. To be holy in all your conduct as he has called you. That's the calling on your life. Somebody look at yourself and say, my calling, my calling is to be holy. Man, your calling is to be holy with your eyes. Women, your calling is to be holy with your mouth. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean that women can't fall with their eyes, and it doesn't mean that men can't fall with their mouth. But how many know, you know what, we have tendencies. <laughs> amen. I'll amen myself. That's the reality. That's our calling. But the problem is, how do we function in that calling? How do we do that? How many would relate and say, Pastor, when Paul says, you know what, the thing that I don't want to do, I do. And the thing that I do want to do, I don't do. How many know that should not be your life scripture? That's my life scripture, man. <laughs> Guys in the back, go there as soon as you can go there. So when he goes through this and he says this over and over and over again, you know what? Read the read Romans when you get home, the seventh chapter and notice Paul says twice in that chapter that when I sin, I don't sin. Start to identify with the spirit that doesn't sin. Stop. Stop talking. I'm going to get into this next week. Stop talking death in your life. Stop cursing you with your words. I don't curse myself with my words. But as he is being honest and saying, 
I live a life where things that I want to do, I don't do. Things I don't want to do, I do. In that reality of life, at the end, he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Who is going to call you to walk in that? Who who is going to cause you to walk in that holy life? Let me tell you who it is. It's Jesus Christ. Listen to this. This is in the 8th chapter, the 12th verse. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. Your calling is to put to death the deeds of the flesh. Oh, I ought to make that a rap song. Your calling is to put to death the deeds of the flesh. If God calls you to do it, then you can do it. Here's what else um, the Bible says. uh, For you, if you live, if for you, uh, 13th verse again, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. It's by the spirit of God. That's what causes you to be able to put to death. Somebody say it's by his spirit. I'm going to get that in a minute. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For if you did not receive the spirit of bondage, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out. You guys got this? Abba, Father. It's by the Spirit. You two guys, quickly come on up here. You're my examples, quickly. Okay, you stand on this side, you stand on this side. Okay, face this way. You can't do it. You got a problem. You got all kinds of problems. I don't know what your problems are, but God knows what your problems are. I'm not, you're just an example. Although, you got problems, right? You got problems, right? Here, let me say, I got problems. The question isn't who doesn't have problems. The question is, are we going to walk in victory or are we going to walk in defeat? And there's so much junk preached from the pulpits of accepting that you don't have to live holy. That this guy and this guy in listening to these goofballs. Amen. In listening to these goofballs who have this warped, twisted unbiblical understanding of of what they call the gospel of grace you know what they don't get it he doesn't get it and he doesn't get it and you know what and the pastor is the one who's leading them you know what to this consistency that year after year month after or week after week month after month year after year that they're dealing with the same issues that they dealt with 10 years ago, five years ago, 10 months ago. That's not our calling. Right. So, so how come this guy gets it at some point in time and this guy does it? Well, one reason, because he started going to a good church who preaches, you know what, what first Peter says. Yeah. That we're called to be holy as he is calling. In how much of your behavior? All. How much? All. All. Okay, and he understands the calling. See, part of the big problem for you two is that, you know what? Most of the people on the Internet won't call you to righteousness. And so you can't you you can't you're called to such a low standard that you go below the standard that is already low. And God doesn't call you. I showed it to you. I could spend I could spend, you know what, the rest of the time just showing you I could spend tell tell Esperanza tonight showing you scripture just like I showed you in Peter where you're called to holiness. What's the difference between let's just say it's just an example. This guy is starting to walk in victory and this guy continues to 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 fall over and the same things. What's the difference? Here's the difference, guys. Stay here. But watch this. 
For if you received the spirit of bond, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage unto fear. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm always going to deal with this. That's the spirit of fear. That's not the spirit that you received. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out. What? This guy is just hanging out with Jesus. Abba, Daddy, Papas. <laughs> Somebody thought I was making fun of, 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 uh, of Armstrong. Listen to me. I will never make fun of the man of God. Amen, sir. I, believe, I believe in honor. I believe it's so important. I wasn't making fun of, of how he says purpose. I thought at one point, and I, I haven't listened to the tape but I thought he was talking about a relationship with God as he was calling him Papa. That's what I thought he was doing. But I would never make fun of him, and I wasn't making fun of him. I appall that in the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can say amen louder than that. Amen. But this guy, and here's what happens. Go back to the verse before this, the 14th. Uh, go back to the verse, the 13th. For if we live according to the flesh, we will die. That's this guy who is, again, this just as an example. But that's this guy, whoever that guy is today in our congregation. And they hear a, a sermon on holiness and they're trying to live holy. They are trying to live holy. They, they are trying to live holy. This guy's trying to live holy too. But this guy is waking up early in the morning, spending time with Jesus. This guy is just coming to church every Sunday and Wednesday. <laughs> right? And he hears, he hears the messages and he tries and, and here's what he, he keeps on falling and he keeps on picking himself up and saying, I just have to have a stronger determination. Now, this guy better be determined just like this guy. You both better be determined. Their determination has a place. Making a decision that you are going to walk in holiness is really important. What's, well, the difference between these two guys isn't determination. He's determined just like he's determined. But he has seen in the word of God that it's about, uh, go, to, go to verse 15 quickly. It's about Abba Father. It's about hanging out with Papas. With Daddy. That's what it's about. And it's in his relationship that he has with Jesus that he starts to walk in victory in Jesus Christ. Because it's, watch this, it's by his spirit. So he's, watch this, I'm, I'm the God figure. He's coming to me, and is God, is God there for you? You ever make, it, make a date that God's like, oh, I'm too busy? Ever? No, God is always there for him. The question isn't, is God there for you? The question is, are you there for God? The question isn't, you know what? The question isn't, are you going to show up? Is God going to show up for the date? The question is, will you show up for the date? But when he does that, you know what? Now he's spending time with God and in a relationship. Because he's got a relationship with God. What is he doing? He's talking to God. God's talking to him. He's talking to God. We're talking back and forth. There's this download of the spirit that he gets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Bad theology, Pastor. You know what? The Bible says he already has the spirit of God. Well, wait a minute. Uh, hey, bad theology, you. Because the Bible says in Ephesians, it doesn't say be filled with the spirit. It says the Greek says be be filling with the spirit. Yeah. Understand 
guys, we've got this all wrong. Probably to some extent, every single one of us have this all wrong. To some extent. Because the, the, here is the, and, and, and we've got it wrong because predominantly the pastors, with every eye, ba- every eye closed and every head bowed, you know what, if you want to accept Jesus, all you have to do is ask him into your heart. Is all that true? Absolutely is all that true, except all you got to do. That's ridiculous. Like I'm going to go out with Tamara, you know what, and have, can you imagine? I go out with Tamara the first date and I buy her a ring, a wedding ring. And on the first date, I'm like, hey, baby, like you don't know me, but I'm a great guy. You know what I mean? And man, will you marry me? Now, if she was nuts enough to say yes, And some people would say she was nuts enough to say yes even later on. (laughs) But that's a different sermon. If she if she was nuts enough to say yes, then imagine then I never hang out with her. It is crazy. And yet, to some extent, that's American Christianity. I, I got this from a good friend and it's I'm going to start to adopt it because not because I'm trying to be like his church, but you know what? His church understands something really, really important. I want to draw people to have in co- uh, corporate encounters with God. That's what we had today, a corporate encounter with God, and then get you to a place where you start to have daily encounters with God. But see, we don't understand because we have this mentality of one shot. You know what? Once saved, don't get mad at me if, 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 if you think this, but understand what I'm preaching. Once saved, always saved. You know, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, um, I was raised in the church. I was raised to love Jesus. I got baptized when I was five and knew what I was doing. I would go to church. You know what my prayer when I was six years old? Here was my prayer when I would go to church. God, help me not to cry today. Because I would go to church and, and my dad would, would, would preach. And man, I, would, I was just tender for God. And I knew it was like, oh, God, help me not to cry today because I cry all the time. And I, uh, you know what I mean? But here's what I would pray. Here's what I would pray one, at night. I would say, God, I pray that you save everyone in the world. You know what I would pray that? I mean, not that I wasn't compassionate to people that weren't saved, but you know what was kind of my, my catch on that? I was in the world. There was a prayer at five that I prayed every night. I prayed salvation for myself every single night. Do you see that? Because I was in the world. Now, those of us who know good theology know you don't got to get saved every day. But the problem with that is we've gotten away with the theology that says, God says, hey, listen, I want to hang out with you every day. Do you understand? And when we get, when, when church becomes something, when we start here, listen, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to talk to all you. When we start to connect to God, when Sunday and Wednesday begins to be the time that we connect with God, that's the time that we start to become religious. And we're not even as pastors, we're not even, we're not even, we're not trying to do that. We're trying to connect with God. But we're teaching people in our mannerisms in a practical sense that that's it. Come Sunday and Wednesday and you're good. And I don't want to teach that because that's not what the writer of Romans is talking about. He's talking about this spirit that is so tender 
that you just want to, that you don't call God Heavenly Father, not that that's wrong, but you call God Daddy. That's what Abba means. It's Daddy. And this guy, and if you are this guy, stop it. Stop trying to, like, ah, I'm not going to do that. I mean, have that dependency. I mean, have that, that not dependency, have that, that tenacity. But get over to how this guy does it. Because this guy recognizes it's by the Spirit that I'm going to start walking in victory in these areas of my life. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise God. How many received that? You guys can sit on it. If, if that's you, if that's you, I want, I want to pray with you. And you say, Pastor, I've been way too much this guy and not enough this guy. I've been way too single and way not married enough. <laughs> if you want to recommit to your husband today, husband Jesus, I want you to raise your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. Raise it high enough. Father, thank you for these who has hands that are raised. Help us today to draw closer to God. Help us tomorrow to live victory in sin because we're drawing close to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.